Well, welcome to Caprini. Thank you. Um, so I was just wondering if you can tell me a little bit about your research here. Um, and in the medical field of anthropology and what your recent studies have been. Well, my research, I'm a biological medical anthropologist, and my research focuses on health and culture. I look at people's health beliefs and their behavior that's related to their health beliefs. So my research has focused on uh, African American communities in terms of male-female relationships, uh, condom use, risk behavior related to HIV AIDS. I've also worked in the uh, Indian community here, in particular the uh, Gujarati community, which we have the largest Gujarati community in the United States right here in, in Houston. And uh, there I looked at traditional health beliefs and how the new genetic information, given we've mapped out the human genome, how will that information fit into their health beliefs? Wow, okay. Um, now, when you're talking about um, biology and anthropology, mm -hmm. can you explain that a little bit? Well, biology, when we look at illnesses, there are uh, biological factors, there are cultural and social factors, there are environmental factors, physical environmental factors, mm -hmm. uh, toxins, the climate, uh, pollution, things like that. Uh, there are also biological factors because we're, uh, in terms of genetics, uh, genes that may put you at risk for disease. In particular, since we've mapped out the human genome, the second phase of that project is the HapMap project. Okay. And with the HapMap project, they're looking at sections of the DNA and associating it with disease. So what are we at risk for from a genetic perspective? biological part of it, and then what are we at risk for in terms of environmental factors, which include uh, toxins in the air, uh, but also the social environment in terms of our access to health care, in terms of racism, mm -hmm. so and also cultural factors that can put us at risk for disease or prevent disease. Okay. What are some of the, uh, the interesting facts that you found in these uh, minority communities regarding mm -hmm. um, the genome, ex uh, you know, mapping, especially that actually? Because that's your recent research, right? That's my recent research, and there I'm looking at uh, traditional health beliefs. People believe in uh, practice Ayurveda, which is a traditional uh, medicine in India where they're looking at the different doshas, uh, a balancing system there, hot and cold. And uh, in looking at that, then uh, genetic information, in particular gene manipulation, fits into their traditional health beliefs because you want to bring yourself back into balance. And in particular, uh, if you're uh, at risk for something, and in the future, if we can have gene man manipulation to reduce that risk, mm -hmm. then you bring yourself back into balance. Also, uh, they believe in karma which means uh, there's a cycle of cause and effect. Whatever you do now can affect you in future lives. Yin, yang, all yeah. Okay. And so, and uh, for people, they want to um, practice prevention, have good health. Uh, many Indians are vegetarian, so they believe that you have to be responsible for your own health. Different communities have different prevention health beliefs. And here's one concerning karma. Mm -hmm. that's part of the culture that can be used as a prevention strategy. And people talked about uh, stress and how you need to alleviate tr uh, stress because that too will bring you back into balance. So people practice yoga, for instance. Maybe I need to practice this <laughs> <laughs> Yoga, and uh, you know, I've started too with yoga mm -hmm. because it does create a calmness and uh, a relieving of stress, which we all know is a risk factor for uh, ill health. I think maybe I need to start uh, getting myself <laughs> back into balance. balance. I yeah. think we all need to think about that because on a very basic level, that is also what biomedicine is about. Mm -hmm. Because we talk about, we talk about it in t different terms, but it's really the same thing. Risk factors such as stress, high fat diet, we're talking about it all the time. Why are we the obese society? Uh, lack of exercise. And uh, Michelle Obama is that's her new thing to go yeah. out there and make America fit. Yes, uh, and having a garden, eating fresh foods and mm -hmm. raw foods and things like that. 
all of those things, that's bringing you back into balance too. So we may use different terms for the same thing, but you have to be uh, culturally appropriate. And in uh, the Indian community, maybe talking about it in terms of karma will be uh, more helpful in terms of pre prevention. That's right. Because um, I know in South Africa, when we talk about, you know, we've also got our different cultural differences. Mm -hmm. And maybe if they talk to you in the way that um, would make sense to that culture, then yeah, definitely it would be more helpful mm -hmm. and I think more effective, mm -hmm. definitely. Different groups have different ways of doing it. Uh, and that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, as a medical anthropologist, your research interests include condom use, HIV, mm -hmm. AIDS, racism in health, and health issues among people of color. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about those and explain what it is that caught, uh, about these that caught your interest? Well, I started that in the early 90s, uh, uh, the height of the uh, AIDS pandemic. And what caught me was uh, talking to friends and family members who didn't think that they were at risk. Although when we looked at the prevalence of HIV AIDS, even then, it was high in the black community. Mm -hmm. uh, and also people dying from AIDS and it being published in the paper or wherever that they died from cancer. So it was like this negative stigma uh, people didn't want to talk about it, yet we were dying from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that, uh, then I started doing research on male-female relationships, uh, how people communicate about uh, condoms, how did they think about condoms, did they feel that it was protective, and trying to get at the knowledge then about HIV AIDS. Do they have the knowledge, which I saw is high. People know how you get HIV through sex, through fluids, uh, but at the same, and people know that if you use condoms, that that can prevent you mm -hmm. from getting it. And so I had a survey, and it was interesting, because at the beginning of the survey, I would ask questions like, how risky is it, how likely is it that someone else will get HIV if they do not use a condom? And people said, very likely. Then I would ask questions about their own condom use. Uh, the last time you had sex, did you use a condom? They would say no. And then later in the interview, I would ask, how likely is it that you would get HIV if the, you do not use a condom? That's when things usually stopped. Mm -hmm. And that's when it turned from this quantitative survey to something more qualitative. Because they started thinking about themselves and their behavior. Never me, it's always someone else. It's right. someone else. And people would say things like, um, well, I trust him. Uh, I, he, look, he, he comes from a good family. And in the black community, it's very important to be attached to a male. Mm -hmm. uh, for young girls, these were girls in their 20s, early 30s, and they want to get married. The goal is to get married or to be in a monogamous relationship or at least to be in a relationship. And if you're in a relationship, why should you use a condom? <laughs> the problem is if you only see this person twice a month, are you really in a relationship? And how much do you know their sex partners, all that? I know. And that's one thing that hits my students when I tell them, when you have sex, you're having sex with everyone they've ever had sex with. Exactly. Think so about that. That kind of research. Um, how do you incorporate that research into your classes here at U of H? Well, I also offer a course on HIV AIDS. And uh, the two things mesh. Uh, we have uh, discussions about condom use. We have a uh, discussion, of course, about the prevalence of it, how you get it, um, uh, treatment for it. So we just go through the whole gamut in terms of HIV AIDS and it's a part of the course. Mm -hmm. And in that course also, I always uh, bring in uh, two or three panels of people uh, living with HIV AIDS, and of course, specialists in the areas such as physicians, uh, people who uh, do counseling in mm -hmm. HIV AIDS, so they can hear from people who are working on the ground. Uh, an interesting thing about the panel though, uh, and students write papers about this, uh, they always write about the young people there who look just like them. And I always make sure we include people like that. Because they'll say things like, oh, she looks just like me. 
uh, I didn't think about it happening to me until now. She looks like me. I mean, they would say th that phrase, and I was like, oh, they need someone who looks like them for them to know that it can be them. It's kind of like an assimilation that could mm -hmm. be me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because it, it, it's thought-provoking, and it would cause them, I hope, to you know, look at it and maybe listen to your research and you know, make sure that they're having safe sex. Um, that it can happen mm. to anyone. Yes, and uh, throughout the course, I stress who's at risk because you know they come in with this view, oh, it's gay people, <laughs> they're the ones at risk. But through the course, I think they see who's at risk. Look in the mirror, mm -hmm. it's me. But in terms of my teaching it, uh, philosophy, I try to make it uh, recognizable to students. I don't uh, think of myself as lecturing to students, uh, we have a discussion. And I, uh, there are always points that, of course, you're trying to make. And in different classes, there are certain things, like an introduction to physical anthropology. There are certain uh, things you should learn, no matter where you take that we, course we in the country. The but at the same time, we can bring it up to date. We can look at what's going on in the news today in terms of views about genetics. Uh, natural selection, the fossil evidence for human evolution. So I try to bring it uh, and use examples that are relevant to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, then, it's not this foreign thing. It's something that approachable. And also, I try to make it enjoy because I love anthropology. Mm -hmm. And I want them to see that this is a career that you can have, you can enjoy, you can have an occupation that's also a hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I present it to them. That's great. How do you think that um, discussion in particular makes it just so much more effective? Well, this interactive, uh, they're critiquing, they're thinking. I don't want them to come in, I uh, give them uh, information for them to regurgitate. Mm -hmm. We want to do critical thinking. Uh, you don't have to agree with me, and I tell them, you don't have to agree with me, uh, but we're going to have a discussion about it and move forward in that way. So I want them to think, and I want them to learn that they should critique whatever they read, wherever they read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't just take things for granted because no, this person wrote it. it. Critique that, yeah. and that's what we do. That's great. Well, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for being mm -hmm. on Graffiti. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um,